Oh, right. So I'm talking to. Um, if you'd like I'm to Gary Carr. Itself. I'm one of the founders of Two Point Studios. I'm Ben Heimers. I'm another founder and uh, technical director. Coolio. And you're both from Two Point Hospital. So, what well, I kind of want to ask you first, I mean, there's normally always an interesting story behind the names of companies you guys were involved with. Um, is there anything interesting behind the Two Point name? <laughs> no. No? <laughs> it, it was a number of different names. Names are really hard. They are really hard, but rubbish <laughs> names. We spent a long time and eventually we just found one that we didn't hate. Argue about as yeah. much? Um, yeah. In fact, we find games easier than names. Mm. Games yeah. are easier, much easier to make than actually cool names yeah. for studios. It's really easy to be pretentious about a game name for a studio and just sound, you know, something like Whispering Pig or, you know. Adjective animal is exactly. too, so too easy. I felt too old for a name like that. I felt I'd be really embarrassed. Part, I, I, the, the truth is, partly, it was a really bad idea that I started pushing at you and Mark and then you turned it into a less angry idea. I was a little bit negative about Lionhead and what yeah. happened with Lionhead. Uh, and there was a lot of terminology being used at the time around, oh, we're going to make Lionhead 2.0 and it's going to be amazing. And of course it wasn't, right? So I, it was a joke we're saying, yeah, let's, just, let's call ourselves 2.0 because that didn't work. Um, <laughs> and then you, you told me to stop being so bitter. Yeah. <laughs> and, and Mark just didn't like the name anyway. Uh, and then I tried to turn it into two point perspective yeah. for a while. Gary did some logos with like the lines mm. meeting. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like it's all that construction, yeah. that kind yeah. of isometric. I know, it's, I, I know two point perspective is not isometric. It's it's, yeah, I know that, but it kind of has that feel of being kind of look down viewpoint. And then we kind of argued around that for a while. And then I, I think it was Mark, and you said, "What about just two point?" And then you like yeah. that. You sort of went, I like that. And I thought, well, it's got a bit of my idea in it, so I'll just shut up. Yeah. <laughs> and that was it, really, wasn't it? Yeah, and that's the true story. <laughs> that's the truth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, another good thing Mark said is, don't make a name of a game. This is why we kind of put Two Point Hospital. Theme Park was a rubbish name for a game, because if you Google Theme Park, you don't get... You yeah, get Theme Park. It's Google level, isn't it? Yeah. That's true, yeah. So we kind of came up with a mashup, which made it, like, can only really be us. Yeah. Kill. So, um, did you think like twenty five years ago you'd still be working on games like this when the original idea for Theme Park first came about? Mm. Uh, I didn't think I'd be still working in twenty five years. If I'm <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, genuinely, I, I didn't know if um, games was something I got into by mistake in the first place. I went, I went to make films, but they put me in a the game division of Palace Film. Company. And it just gave me a lot of freedom because nobody else worked in games back then, so I could make it up and nobody said no. Um, but I did think at some point I'd grow up and get a real job. <laughs> Don't uh, this is a real job, Gary. <laughs> but the weird thing about games is they take so long to make. Before you know it, two more years have gone. Yeah, <laughs> two yeah. more years have gone by. That's what you say about the starting of this, because people, people ask why haven't, why haven't they done it sooner? Why haven't we done it sooner? Yeah. Uh, and you always say, well, it's just, I don't know, it just didn't happen. Just yeah. time, another year goes past. You're on a project, you've got to get that project done, that's two years yeah. gone. Then, you, yeah, then yeah. You, you're on the next thing, you get excited about the next thing, yeah. that's too much. It just takes time. Um, I, and you know what? I, I genuinely, I think, Kim, we spoke earlier, Mark and I spoke about this for years. Whenever we'd go out for a beer or just want to be a bit kind of reminisce, you know, reminisce about the good old days, we, that was just a highlight for us. One of the big highlights was Theme Hospital. So, you know, it was really Ben who encouraged me to sort of get back into this idea and stop talking about it and go and do it. So I think I just spoke to you and, and said, look, I really want to leave, uh, but I need someone like you to come with me. Yeah. <laughs> Which is really scary because yeah. I always said to jokingly, my career's behind me, right? In the sense of, I've done my risks, I've been around a long time, but this is your opportunity. You're sure. at Microsoft, you're in a massive opportunity here. You, you, know, you were 30 at the time, I think. Yeah. And I just thought, I, I didn't want to drag you out of that. But I wanted to be dragged. <laughs> I know, but I was just scared. Lovely, that, yeah. you, know, that, you know, I was it's encouraging just, you to leave yeah. a good career. It's a know? pretty good opportunity though, right? Get, so is this like going back to Lionhead? Yes, yes, that's right. So We were yeah. an incubation team together, uh, you should explain that. Gary hired me for, the, for his incubation team at Lionhead. Um, 
which was just doing sort of uh, prototypes um, in the interview and I sat next to him and he just dropped in I say that he dropped it in he says that I prompted it I did not just go it's by the way I was the artist of the hospital why, why did, would I say did, that he did exactly that uh, <laughs> and I, I was like oh my god such a liar I like him but he's such a liar <laughs> However it happened, it was awesome. I just sort of uh, jaw dropped and I thought, whoa, this is, this is amazing. Uh, and then we carried on working on, uh, it, well, it, the department was doing a bunch of prototypes, but one of them was like a, a sim kind of game. Uh, oh. And I don't know, Gary must have uh, seen something in how we were working together. And as he said, like we, we went for a, a wander around and um, talked about potentially leaving. <laughs> I don't know why he thought I'd hesitate, because, <laughs> come on, if you're, if you're asked to start a company with... Uh, it- Creators of the must be. Yeah, yeah. There was a lot of hurdles to get over, yeah. though, right? I mean, maybe yeah, we just didn't nothing. tell you how scary it is, but um, I make it sound easy. But I, yeah. I couldn't have done it. I mean, Ben was when we we hired Ben in action. The reason I probably talked about the must was we were looking for a sim guy, yeah. right? I was trying to get a sim designed within Linehead. That's not a challenge. It's getting it through Microsoft, right? Yes. And you know they'd have the same four IP for forever. Yeah. You know, either with Fable. Thoughts uh, Gears of War. Halo. Halo. And it was just getting a little bit like, can we do something else? You know? I can imagine. So uh, kind of all I was trying to do was push you up. Now, to be honest, to be fair to Microsoft, that's fine because they're, they're a big IP and they do really well with those IP. Mm, yeah. but, but I just didn't want to do yet another fable because it was becoming yeah, it's a just little frustrating. Bit. Yeah. being within that um, the, so most of the company actually has, has worked well almost mm. everyone's worked at Lionhead mm. and everyone's worked at large mm. companies and it's yeah. just a whole different atmosphere so it's, mm. it's really nice to have started a, a small so we weren't bitching about anything it was just a case yeah. of I was given an incubation team they said go and think of something then and all I wanted to do was go right okay Lionhead used to make black and white used to make games like the movies it was born out of Bullfrog that used to make a lot of sim games yeah. why aren't we thinking about incubating something in that space so I hired yeah. Ben Ben was uh, somebody who was a big fan, loved it. He had a lot of experience in AI and sort of, you know, making people come to life and how they move as, as groups of people. So it was like perfect for us. Um, our prototypes, you were just plowing through the prototype really well. I thought, this, this guy knows how to build these games. Uh, and so that was the motivation, really, to start the company. And that's why we're partnering. You know, it wasn't like, me and Mark should get together and hire this dude. It was like, no, we should get together and make this dude a partner because yeah. that was important. There's no point nice. bringing this talent on board and not giving them, you know, the chance to direct the company. You're very totally. kind. <laughs> <laughs> so, theme hospital, I mean, Two Point Hospital, rather, definitely carries on that, the kooky spirit mm. of the first game. Um, where did that kooky spirit like, come from originally? And why have you decided, kind of kept, decided to keep it going? It's a little bit of insecurity on our part. It's easy to hide behind not taking it too seriously. If you make something really serious, you kind of judged on, on it. Has to, you, have, you know, it's easy to make jokes, and it's a kind of a nervous thing, a lack of self-confidence, I think, sometimes. You can hide behind humour a little bit. Also, we don't take ourselves too seriously, if I'm honest. We don't have detailed design documents. Sega sometimes go meetings of that. Yeah. <laughs> going through documents. <laughs> sometimes <laughs> thorough plans. We don't really do that. If Sega asks yeah. us for a design document, we kind of go, okay, we'll get on to that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 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 Bullfrog panic, never panic, did panic. one design document, ever. <laughs> never seen anything yeah. written down, mm. ever. You know, either yeah. It was either Peter had an idea and we riffed on it, or we had ideas if we weren't working with Peter and we riffed on them. Oh. That was the way we worked. Now I appreciate in large teams you can't do that, but we're not a large team. Mm. Yes. In a small experienced team, mm. you can make me take notes, absolutely, but there's no point designing your game before you start it because you've no idea if that's any good or not. You have to yeah. design it organically, don't you? That's what I believe anyway. Yeah, and that's that's why it's nice having the team that we've got because it's mm. small so you don't need all that overhead of trying to communicate to everyone in all the different departments. Plus we've hired some super experienced guys. The average... Uh, I'm, I'm a, bit of a weirdo bit of a geek so I track this stuff I've made a graph of how the average age of the studio has changed <laughs> as we've made each other uh, and it's, it's somewhere oh, around awesome. 40 year old mark so that's awesomely that's, nerdy yes. yeah yeah it's, I've actually made a graph and it brought the average table. down a bit then uh, the average is I think the average dropped down to about 
38 at one point. Yeah, that's wow. still for a game studio. That's, Did we have that's a work experience yeah. kid in or something? It might be after Harry Jones. <laughs> yes, <laughs> bless him. Well. Um, yeah, but the, the the joy of having experienced people is that you can just kind of talk about ideas and they'll do them without yeah without needing all this uh, huge amount of mm. documentation and direction. Um, it's nice to just have a small group of guys that all know what they're doing that you can just. Uh, Discuss things and it happens. Yeah, uh, that's really cool, and that's that's where the game's kind of like grown so rapidly. And back to the humor point, I think the humor point is just a, as well. It means that something quite, you know, sim games are quite strategic. There's a lot of depth in in two point, right? Two point has got plenty of depth there, but if it was dry, it might scare people off. True. Humor is hopefully a way of encouraging people to play a little longer in the space and then suddenly before they know it they're actually clicking on some of these lists and boxes and sliders and and mm. before you know it you've kind of kidded someone into a genre they may not have actually naturally been into so exactly, it, it's yeah. a way of hoodwinking people to play more core games really it does help humanize it yeah it does it does and also it lets you push boundaries a little bit because you know hospitals are about life and death we didn't want to do that and make it too heavy. You know, mm. we wanted to have a situation mm. where death's almost a bit of a celebration. You know, our ghosts are kind of fun, <laughs> yeah. they're playful, and yeah. you don't get to the point where you just think, oh, "I've killed somebody." Yeah, <laughs> that's and a bit of a damn. Yeah. It's like, oh well. <laughs> I want you to care about them. We want you to care about of them. Course. But and death should not make be like this thing where you go, "That's it." Now I'm not playing this anymore. That's, that's yeah. It never gets any easier. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <That's it. laughs> So, um, what are like differences, like gameplay wise? I mean, obviously, a lot of difference. Um, I had a look at like, the graphics work of it. I mean, mm. you've kind of, I mean, obviously, it's three D now as opposed yeah. to Theme Hospital being in two D. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> but it's not like, say, like a mega triple no. A. What were you really going for with like the art style? Uh, point, so. One of the things I'll I'll speak to this yeah, initially. Um, that really scared me because I did all the artwork in the original except the three D stuff with like the intro and yes. the. Uh, in fact, the, I only did part of the board. Andy Bass did the the, the, yeah. the lovely board bit. Sometimes I take credit for it because you don't say, "Did you do that?" So I pretend I did. You can take credit. No, uh, I did. We'll pretend. So the it's on the, camera now. The, the, the <laughs> no, sorry, <laughs> Andy. Uh, so one of the things about the original art style at the time it was quite dated, mm. uh, but weirdly it's less dated now because it was bespoke. It was hand drawn. It was really down to me what it looked like rather than some tech. Like some engine, some three D, you know, rendering technology. Uh, whereas the three D en- rendering technology back then looked amazing, but by, by today's standards, looks pretty ropey, right? Mm. So I was really mindful that the style had to somehow survive, hopefully, another twenty years. So we've gone for a very sort of clay, soft look, mm. which doesn't look too rendered. Kind of looks three D, but not three D. Looks hand crafted. Bit a wrong, like, a bit wonky. Yeah, it's a little like Nick Park. Yeah, Nick exactly. Now if you look at something like Arden and their their work, it hasn't really changed. You know, if you look at his early sort of art almost art films he made, which won awards, and now he does what's effectively treble A movies, they look the same tech, right? So in a sense that trick is is you know an obvious trick to play. We're just trying to make it not sure. look too tech dependent. Mm-hmm. Right. So it hopefully will not age as quick. Excellent. Cool. Um, and why didn't you choose to? I mean, because a lot of people tend to not associate projects like with like Kickstart or going into early access these days. You've decided not to go down those yeah. routes. Uh, yeah. Well, we we toyed with that idea. Didn't we? Yeah. Um, we thought right at the beginning that that was the way to do it, but then we um, got some advice from. We talked to a bunch of uh, friends, people that we know, uh, who put us in touch with. Uh, well, who was it? Debbie at Team Seventeen. Well, we spoke to yeah, we spoke to Debbie at Team Seventeen. She um, was someone we sort of knew. Yeah, and we just we got some advice from them that perhaps the wave of Kickstarter successes had peaked. She wasn't and, putting uh, us off. She was saying no, it's she riskier she now. Said it was you know? great for because we we got in touch with her through mm. uh, my friend Gav at Playtonic. Um, they they did uh, ukulele, yeah. and that was a huge Kickstarter success. That's success. They yeah. blasted through all the uh, stretch goals, which is why one of the reasons why we're considering it. But then they sort of gave the advice that actually there's plenty of negatives to that. It you know puts 
perhaps too much control in the hands of uh, the community and you're kind of beholden to them for certain things and it's not, you don't actually there's lots that comes off that budget so there's a ton of sort of negatives plus they reckon the, the wave of that had um, passed and then there's the whole sort of stress of uh, wondering if you're going to make it to your goals of or course. wondering if you'll just dribble past the goal mm. I just don't think it's a world yeah. I understood particularly well, if I'm honest. That as well, yeah. Old fart that I am. It's kind of like, <laughs> yeah, you know, don't ask for what you, you want. You ask for a lot less than what you want. Yeah. Oh, so that, that's one of the weird well, things. Why are we asking for less? Yeah. Uh, because people don't want to give you what you really need, so, so we're going to lie to people. Yeah, but it's yeah. not really a lie, because that's the way... You, I, I just I don't understand this world, yeah. man. Let's just make a game <laughs> with a publisher who are going to you know, help yeah. us make the game. And that was, mm. for me... Great yeah. publisher, I understand that. Yeah. So they do good things. things, we do good things, we put we work together, let's do that. Yeah. You know, I, I didn't know how to reach out to a community, I didn't know what stretch goals meant, I didn't understand the whole tier system. Yeah. You kept telling me, old oh, man, this is what it means. And I just yeah. thought, it's, Still don't uh, get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're giving us money and we haven't done anything yet? Yeah. How does that work? But then there's the that's what that publishers you, do you actually do have to do some stuff as well which is yeah. tricky yeah. Like, there's, yeah. a, there's a lot of work I don't want to take money off people and I've not got anything to give mm. them yeah yeah, but you're going to make something for them well then they give us the money yeah. isn't that the <laughs> why are we give, why are they give us money we've got nothing I just didn't get it. Gary got confused so we didn't do that <laughs> <laughs> it just wasn't worth it don't start me talking <laughs> <laughs> speaking of publishers um, yeah. this is kind of I mean some people are normally obviously associated with Actually, I was going to say, got a couple of franchises, the company of Heroes, Football Manager, all that sort of thing. <coughs> but this sort of sim is a pretty new area for them. Yeah. How receptive have they been? Oh, hugely. Well, that's that was the great thing is that we we spoke to a few publishers. <coughs> uh, we eventually got in touch with Sega, and mm. we had the weird thing of uh, they kind of told us, well, actually, just last week we were having a meeting, and we said that we needed some kind of game. In like a bit like what Bullfrog games. used to make. A bit like Bullfrog yeah. games. And then we came along and... Uh, Literally and then, knocked oh, on the door. Which yeah. was thanks to you and your relationship with Christian. That's through Christian at Placeport. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, you've been actually really helpful. And I was thinking thanks. about this. You know, without your nice, yeah. input, we would be really in a awesome. bad... Yeah. Anyway, um, Christian put the, the word in, uh, yeah. uh, thanks to your... your yeah, your got, got us in the door. And got us in the door. And, and then it was literally the situation where... Oh my God! You're those guys who did those games. Wait there, and they brought a few more people in. Like, it's those guys. We were just talking about making a game like this. So, in a sense, it made both our jobs easier. They were looking to build a team from the ground up that could make these games, and we were looking to make these games. So, yeah, just one of those serendipitous moments, if that's the right uh, word. Exactly. Exactly. Right. Good word. I said it right. Nice one. <laughs> um, yeah, and it's been a good relationship because it's. Uh, so as you say, Sega's is kind of uncommon territory, but at the same time, they have started making inroads into mm. uh, strategy things with uh, things like Company of Heroes, Dawn of War, um, and then other sim games like uh, Football Manager, Manager. Yeah, then, I mean, so I think it just of fits into this new, uh, new sort of PC new, direction. Yeah, PC direction. Um, the yeah, and then the relationships have been great because they're, they're very hands off, supportive, but hands off. Yeah. They, they let us make the game that we want to make and then arrange things like this lovely press day nice. um, which, which is yeah it's great it's exactly what we want exactly. to do. we would have done a rubbish job of this I know we would rubbish. have sent invites out sandwiches. we would have got it on the wrong day probably mm. it would have been terrible you don't have to squeeze into our meeting room yeah. and, uh, our, our office is rubbish this yeah. is nice <laughs> you don't have to sit on like just sit on his chairs <laughs> on my lap and we'd, probably, we'd, we'd, get, we'd go to Little and get some sandwiches for you but yeah. Little yeah. bloody hell <laughs> no, not a bad word. It's little. It's lovely. Good biscuits. Um, are you looking at as far as like? I mean, once the game is not out yet, it's still mm. out. For, once the game is released, are you kind of looking? Because I mean, and when we've been talking about it, we mentioned um, some modern games that have taken that like, you've been taking a bit of inspiration from things like City Skylines. Mm. Are you kind of looking at similar systems like that in terms of, like potentially upgrading the game? No. Careful, you. Your camera. Can you see this one. I'd love to tell you the plans, Kim, I really would, but it's the first time we're showing the game, so we have to keep Pete very happy that he's got stuff to talk about in the future, and you know, there are, to be honest with you, you know, we, it's a long road, we're way off being in any kind of modding space, right, but you know, we'll look at what, what 
people who like our games one and we'll think about it as we go. Yeah. You know, we've got well, loads of ideas. We've got ideas for extra content, yeah. extra stuff we might want to do. Yeah. Um, we've got, there's like analytics, tele telemetry kind of stuff built into the game yeah. so we can have a stab at the co uh, guessing the kind of things people want. Um, we would love to right. support the game as much as possible. Get the game right first. Uh, and then mm. potentially, you know, other, other games yeah. we've said before, other games in the same world in, the, in Two Point County. Uh, that would be the dream is to carry on making yeah. little people games forever yeah. that all kind of fit together in this world mm. um, yeah because you, yeah. you've been very open about yeah like these are the sort of games that we want to do and we want to yeah. make more sims so I mean what other things like what other products could we potentially expect <laughs> I, I will say once again I, I, it'd be lovely to point chuck all our ideas at you but we obviously won't be allowed to do that no of course not but I, what I will say is don't think of the most exciting Things that you would want to see. They're the last thing you should do. It should be the most mundane, ordinary, because what you like to do is just twist those subjects. Yeah. Mm. Hospitals aren't really very interesting, are they? <laughs> we saw a list from mm. Sega on, we've done some market research, yeah. and these are really good subjects for potential things to be in two point counter. And number three was hospitals. Yeah, that's right. The would a hospital have even been in this list 27 years yeah. ago? No, it wouldn't. <laughs> Nobody would have. So it's not those things. Those are really yeah. exciting things. You know, they're space games, and you know, we should be making sim games out of yeah. really dull subject matters or really yes. things yeah. that aren't exciting or interesting. Two we, point we department store. store or two point parking uh, two point yeah. car park or <laughs> two point anything that is not necessarily <laughs> interesting yeah. gives us something to twist. Mm. And, yeah, and well, I think that's, that's the nice thing about a lot of like, especially like the bullfrog mm. sim games, is that a lot of them do make like the mundane. Yeah, that's exactly it. Exciting. That's the trick. You that's play. one of the best things about video you know, games. It, like, it, it's a trick. Like it's love. an amazing trick. You're amping something be above what it was before makes it look like, oh, they've done this amazing twist on this thing. It's like, yeah, because it's easy to amp something like a hospital into something interesting. Try making something like, I don't know, space travel interesting. It's already interesting, right? Yeah. It's pretty like, much. What, yeah. can so do what can you do with it? Yeah. You've got nowhere to go. You know? <laughs> Going back to like the studios, one of the it seems like being with that Bullfrog and Linehead, even more like other big studios, mm. so many people, alumni from Bullfrog and Linehead, have gone on to form their own small companies. Obviously, you've got Peter himself mm. with 22 cans, but Media, Media Molecule, Molecule yeah. Uh, yeah. Intrepid, mm. Mucky Foot, mm. uh, so many. I mean, what do you think? Was there something in the air from that time? What? Is there any. It's a thing we're trying to recreate. There was a lot of kinship, trust. Uh, you know, a lot of Peter was brilliant at just harvesting talented people, just finding them and just letting them run. Now it became more difficult towards the end when Peter was in charge to um, to necessarily allow creative freedom because you've got hundreds of people costing millions of dollars a month to make games. Mm. So there's a point where it, it you just can't do that, right? It's got to be driven by decision making. So our trick we're trying to play is the same, is small teams, creative freedom, trust of each other's ability, you know, uh, you know, everyone's got a voice and that's really the way we've built Two Point, you know, we all pretty much have a share in the company, so why wouldn't we allow everyone to speak because they, it's their company. Um, and that's it really, I think, and I think, you know, that's what early Bullfrog was like. It was just a company full of people who were allowed to be creative. Excellent. And one last question, I suppose. Um, roughly, is there an idea of when we can expect to see Two Point Hospital? Good question. Uh, I, I, I joked, right, last week. I'm not joking. I actually said May to the PR person. <laughs> right, yes. I just thought, the obviously, yeah. they obviously know that's a joke, because so they went, don't even joke. <laughs> uh, we'll it about officially, I think we're allowed to say... Uh, Later this year. Later this year. Okay, it's just later. Which it is. I mean, you can see we are content uh, complete. Feature complete. Right? Feature complete. Yeah. We're just polish, bug fixing. Things that look wrong are wrong and we'll fix them graphically, but it isn't far off really. You know, we're coming this year. Yep. Later this year. <laughs> later this year. <laughs> we've got time to fix things and we've got time to balance. Yeah. And, and that's the important thing. Yeah. Brilliant. Well, thank you very no, much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Absolutely appreciated.